For over two decades, the IS has been the ultimate connection between car enthusiasts and Lexus. In 2021, Lexus took this legacy to a new level with the launch of the all new IS. They definitely took that opportunity to crank up the performance game with their new driving experience. And of course, the excitement didn't stop there because in 2022, Lexus revealed the all new IS 500, which we did get a quick chance to drive last year at an event. And now we have the 2023 IS 500. So buckle up, let's get into it. So to start off, the IS comes in a bunch of different trims. If you go to Lexus's website and look at their cars that are available, the IS and the IS 500 actually show as two separate models. But if you go into either one of those, it will show all of the trims for the IS, which include the IS 300, the IS 300 all wheel drive, the 300 F Sport design, which is just a design kit on top of the 300, the F Sport design all wheel drive, and then the 300 F Sport, which actually has a bit more sportiness, and the 300 F Sport all wheel drive. Then you have the IS 350 F Sport design, 350 F Sport, and then you have the IS 500 F Sport Performance and the 500 F Sport Performance Premium. This is the 500 F Sport Performance Premium, basically the top of the line you can get in the IS. And if you're looking at the IS 500, if you're going between the Performance and the Performance Premium, there's only a few little bit of differences in there. Most of it has to do with a little bit of the interior tech, but we're gonna dive into most of that today we're going to focus here on the is 500 and what it has to offer so let's get into it starting with the exterior design all right so there's not a ton new with the design here the design actually is getting a bit old but this new is 500 does have some cool features first off this ultrasonic blue mica 2.0 paint looks really good and i got a lot of comments about this vehicle because of the paint color and how much it stands out, especially with all the gloss black bits that you get on this IS 500. So the IS does have a low and imposing stance. In the back, you do have that distinctive singular tail lamp that tapers to mere millimeters in the center. Very dramatic character lines which definitely makes the IS itself very sporty looking. Of course, we do have the F Sport Performance style on this IS 500, which features an elevated hood with lots of sculpting, 19 inch black alloy wheels wrapped in some performance tires. We have that big Lexus Bowtie grille up front with big side air vents on the front fascia. And then of course on the side, you have your F Sport badge and in the back, you just have the IS 500 badge. If you're looking at the full size of this vehicle, the length is 187.3 inches. Wheelbase is 110.2 inches. The width is 72.4 inches and the height is 56.5 inches. It is a wide, low and pretty small sports sedan. All right, let's quickly pop the trunk. Talk about the practicality of this thing by uh, emphasizing the cargo volume that you have in this trunk. You're looking at a cargo capacity of 10.8 cubic feet, which uh, might not sound like a lot, but is really good. This thing goes super far back, easy to pack with suitcases, golf clubs, pretty much whatever you want for the passengers inside. But uh, this isn't the exciting part. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and check out the engine that powers this beast. All right, this is where the 500 of the IS500 really comes into play under the hood. The IS500 comes with a five liter V8 engine, naturally aspirated, pushing 472 horsepower, 395 pound-feet of torque. That's matched up to an eight-speed sport direct shift automatic transmission with paddle shifters. And while you can get the IS in all wheel drive, the IS 500 only comes in rear wheel drive. It is a beast. We'll talk more about the driving performance as we get in and drive it. But until then, we are going to jump inside, take a look at the interior 
some of the tech that you get in this car, and then we'll take it for a drive. All right, and we're here inside the IS500, and obviously it's a Lexus. The interior in here just screams Lexus, but it's really nice. We have essentially what's the base trim of the interior, which is this white new Lux and satin trim, and these seats are super comfortable. They are bolstered, but super padded. And you can see along the doors, we have some of that white new Lux material with black on the dash is black with white stitching our little glove box here but before we go any further let's go ahead and kick it on of course it is push button start and you can hear that engine roaring into power and first thing to notice here is the larger infotainment system this is a 10.3 inch screen which comes on the performance premium model which is what we have the uh, regular performance model has an eight inch screen which is you know a bit shorter and stubbier so this is the performance premium because we do have that 10.3 inch screen one of the few key differences between the performance and the performance premium of course you have apps in here you do have navigation it's touch screen you do have a trackpad down here for also controlling the screen. Very uh, older looking system because it is, hasn't been updated in this vehicle. Now Lexus does have an updated infotainment system, but again, this is the one that's in this vehicle. We do have the traditional analog clock here from Lexus. And of course your AC and heat vents, and then all your AC and heat controls here, your hazard lights, some audio controls and an actual CD player, which I'm sorry to say I didn't test out. What I did test out are these heated and cool seats, which are great. We also have a heated steering wheel. You have the traditional gear shifter here, no shift by wire, push button, anything. This is a traditional gear shifter. You can flip it over for manual shifting. We also have paddle shifters here on the steering wheel. Here's for your drive modes. So you twist it over and that is your sport mode. And then again for sport plus, back for eco, push it in for just your normal. Traction control button, snow, and your auto hold button. Again, the track pad here for interfacing with your screen. Cup holders, nice padded armrest good size cubby steering wheels a nice f sport sporty steering wheel you got perforated leather here white stitching really good grippy nice feel controls on the steering wheel of course your cruise control knob down here which is standard for lexus and again your paddle shifters your instrument cluster is a full digital screen it's actually two different digital screens and the tack there can slide back and forth. I'm pretty sure it used to slide over depending on what drive mode you were in. Now, as you shift drive modes, it does change, but it doesn't slide. But when you kick it off, it will slide to the middle and then start it back up. It's in the middle and then it will slide over on its own. You can push a button here that will slide that to the center. And then when you put it in sport, all right, that gives you a much more sporty focused view. And then of course, as you're in this mode, you can flip through different pages and information based on what you're doing. And we do have a sunroof here, but I think it's time to get this thing out on the road, start talking about the way that it drives. And then we'll start wrapping up this review, talking about the price and some of my final thoughts. But let's get this thing out on the road. All right, so let's take off here in just the normal drive mode. And while you can hear a little bit of that exhaust from the V8 in that quad stacked exhaust, it's not super noticeable and overall, the driving is pretty smooth. We do have F-Sport tuned variable adaptive suspension, which means in normal mode, it can still be a smooth drive, but when you put it into Sport and Sport Plus, that suspension can tighten up and really give you the extra grip and stiffness that you want from a sports car. Overall day-to-day -day driving 
is just a really nice experience in this thing. It is small, it is low to the ground. It's a little bit difficult to get into, especially if you're a bigger guy like myself. But once you're in the seat, it's super comfortable. Everything is exactly where it should be. Everything is definitely in reach. You don't feel too tight in here. And that is a complaint that I had with some of the uh, IS vehicles of the past where you did feel very tight. It did have an issue with the transmission tunnel being in your foot space. But overall, this thing has not had any of those issues. It's just a really good feeling sedan. And of course, with that V8, it's got the power to really push you. Zero to 60 should be in about 4.4 seconds. We'll test that out here in a bit when we get to a back closed off country road. But until then, let's talk about the fuel economy. So you might think that fuel economy is gonna be horrendous. It's got a big V8, it's a sports vehicle, but if you keep it in to normal or eco, it is light enough and small enough of a vehicle that V8 does not need to be pushed very hard. And you're looking at a reasonable 17 miles per gallon city, 25 miles per gallon highway with combined at 20 miles per gallon. And during my full week of driving it, that's exactly what we're at is 20 miles to the gallon. Most of my driving is on city streets and not the highway. And the few times that I am on the highway, there's horrendous traffic, so we're not going very fast a lot more stop and go so take that for what you will that's just my average for the week i bet you if you keep it into eco mode which i didn't do if you keep it into eco mode during most of the time that you're driving it and you're a little bit lighter on the throttle you can definitely get over 20 miles per gallon which again for a v8 sports car it's not bad and of course because it is a v8 sports car when it's time to have fun you can have fun and of course, when it's time to stop, this thing will stop you. You've got nice four piston calipers with 14 inch ventilated discs in the front and two piston 12.7 inch ventilated discs in the rear. And again, when it's time to stop, this thing will stop you. And with that, let's go ahead and put it into Sport and then Sport Plus. And uh, let's push it around some curves, which are hard to find here in North Texas, but we'll push it around and see how we feel of course that exhaust much louder nicer suspension much stiffer brakes good again and cornering super flat super nice feeling this thing just ags you on to go quicker and quicker and of course it is the rear wheel drive only, so you don't have any uh, support from an all wheel drive system and it sounds great. <laughs> One of the hard things about doing videos of cars is really translating the exhaust sound, the feeling from the suspension, the speed, the pushback in the seat. This thing has it all, and if it's not translating through video, hopefully it's translating through the smile on my face every time I hit the gas. All right, we've got this basically closed off back road in the country. Let's go ahead and check the 060, come to a complete stop. I'm not gonna use paddle shifters, but we're in Sport Plus, so we're just gonna gun it and go and I'm gonna hold on for dear life. 4.4 seconds is what we're going for. Uh, we'll see. Ready, set, go. Traction control keeping me safe there. And 60. <laughs> yeah, that's good fun. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun. And then of course you put it back into uh, eco or comfort. It quietens down loosens up and is a nice smooth ride something that you can live with every day you have conveniences like radar guided cruise control and keeping assist you have got radars all around the vehicle you've got 360 cameras for parking it's an easy vehicle to live with every day but can you afford it let's go ahead and talk about the price and then i'll give you some of my final thoughts and wrap it up there 
let's get into it. All right, so as far as price goes, the base 500 performance starts at just over 60K, while this one, the performance premium, has a full MSRP of 64,520. And uh, in my eye, that's actually a really good price for the performance and the full package that you get. Of course, it's not quite as uh, new tech and uh, everything as some of its competition, but I'm completely fine with that. Give me the uh, five liter V8 rear wheel drive and no tech and I would be happy in a vehicle. But 65K, there is quite a bit out there that you could get for 65K. Let's go ahead and jump back out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts on this, the IS500, and then we'll wrap it up there. And with that, there's no doubt that I really like the IS. It's an amazing machine, especially this IS500. I really like the design. Again, it's getting a bit old. I'd like to see Lexus try something a bit newer, which they are starting to do on some of their SUVs. So we'll see if it trickles into the rest of their lineup or what they end up doing with the IS itself. Of course, personally, I really like BMW. I like the interiors and design of the BMWs these days, especially the uh, 4 Series Grand Coupe. So if it was my money and my driveway this thing was parking in, I'd probably end up with that. Although if you chose the Lexus, I definitely wouldn't rag on you at all. It's a really amazing vehicle and you'd probably end up with a vehicle that's uh, more powerful and more reliable than the BMW. So if you're weighing this against the rivals that it has, it's definitely a good choice and I would recommend it. So no matter where you end up, you're probably gonna be happy in the segment. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the IS500. Let me know if you have any other questions that I didn't cover here. We went pretty quickly through this one. If you're into automotive reviews, please subscribe to the channel. We do a different review every week. You should also go check out TXGarage.com for more written reviews as well as event news coverage over there from a lot of great authors, not just myself. And with that, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. He's not driving it yet. Huh? I said he's not driving it yet.